This morning we're working one of our peacocks. This is a gold peacock. We separated these out from gold OB peacocks a while back. We lost most of the breeders in the Texas winter storm. We've been trying to restore things. The strain's not breeding completely true yet. I'll get it there in a while. Let's take a look at the males. These are three young males I picked out of our BRUs, breeders unsexed, to replace the existing males, and I'll tell you why in a minute. The gold males tend to have light leaf ends. He's got a little bit too much blue in his body, but I'm amusing. This guy's got some blue. You have to accept some blue in it. Anyway, these are going to be our three breeder males. Now we're going to look at females, and then we'll look at some youngsters. By the way, at the end of this video, I'm going to do a genetics whiteboard discussion to talk about some of the genetics that we're looking at. Okay, so those are our three males. I kept 27 older breeder females and added 26 youngsters that are sisters of those three males, or at least possibly siblings of those males from the same cohort. couple breeding cycles ago they've grown up. Let's look at these females and I'll tell you what I select for. And one of the problems in this strain is that it throws a lot of sky blue fish, which are nice, but not what I want. This female is really more of a sky blue female. This is a good gold. That's a really good gold. It, in the future, she's going to get pulled out of this breeding colony that right now we just need fit. Okay. That's a nice, really nice gold right there. Okay, so I'm going to put these up and because I don't want to stress them anymore, I'm going to walk down and put them in there. That. I'm putting them in the same bucket with the three breeder males. So we're going to end up with 53 breeder females. 26 of which are new, and I'll tell you why I'm having such turnover in it. The reason is genetics. Okay, so I'm going to take these guys down. And they're back home. Well, I'm not going to show you the big red sword tails we put in there. I forgot the keep any out. We polyculture sword tails and our live bearers and cichlids together. It works remarkably well. Okay, now we're going to take a look at some youngsters. This is a sample of the three types of fish that we got in this breeding cycle. This is obviously a gold. This is a a non-gold, non-OB, and this is an OB gold. And the OB pattern kind of you know, darkens the gold. Now, the reason we get these, even though all the breeders look like this fish, is that in this strain, OB is a recessive. Many, at least one of our breeder males and some of our breeder females carried OB. And then non-gold is recessive to gold. You know, this fish is a non-OB, non-gold. And we ended up getting 70% of these, 18% of these, and 12% of these. And so by going to those three young males, there's a chance that they're homozygous for gold and homozygous for non-OB. And the 26 young females are as chance they are. So I'm expecting the next breeding cycle to get a lower percentage of non-OBs and a lower percentage of non-golds. Okay, so these guys are going to go to grow up. And what I'll do in the whiteboard presentation, there's is show you the genetics of this on board so you can see what's going on. And 
why I'm having turnover in breeders. Okay, good fish teething. Okay, we're going to do a whiteboard presentation of the genetics of our gold peacocks. First, let me make a correction. In the greenhouse video, I said that these fish were derived from our gold OB peacocks. That's wrong. They're descended from fish that we got from Fish Gallery Houston way back in 2018, I think. And there's a good reason why I'm making this correction. The gold characteristic in our OB peacocks is a different characteristic than this gold. And the OB characteristic in our OB peacocks is a different characteristic than the OB in this fish. And at some point I'll explain that, but the two characteristics act differently. OB in our OB peacock lines is a dominant characteristic, a dominant allele. In our gold peacocks and the related dragon blood peacocks, OB is a recessive characteristic. In our OB peacock lines, gold is a recessive characteristic. In our gold peacocks and dragon blood peacocks, gold is a dominant characteristic. So they're different genes. Okay, today we're going to talk about two genes. We're going to talk about a gene that controls whether a fish is gold or gray. Now let's use a little G for the gray. And I don't know, do you, is gray EY or AY? <laughs> I think it's both, so I like EY. And the other characteristic is OB. And I'm going to use a small OB to indicate that it's a recessive and this would be a, a non-OB. So we have two different genes. The gene that controls whether a fish has a gray body or gold body and another gene that controls whether a fish is OB or non-OB. Now let's use our most recent round of offspring to illustrate this. Keeping in mind all of our breeders are gold non-OB. Now then when we got our offspring, let me refer to the numbers over here, the offspring were 70% gold non-OB. They were 18% non-gold or gray, non-OB. Let me check that to make sure. Yes, they were 9% gold OB and 3% gray OB. So what does this tell us about these fish, about the genetics? Since all of the adults were gold non-OBs, it tells you that gray is a recessive and that OB is a recessive. So gold is a dominant and non-OB is a dominant characteristic. And it also tells you, because this distribution is two separate genes, they're not linked, they segregate separately. And that's why from our original gold non-OBs, we got gray non-OBs, we got gold OBs, and we got gray OBs because these two genes, gold and OB, segregate separately. So let's use some Punnett squares to kind of illustrate this. If we look just at the gold characteristic, and I hope I'm doing this big enough for y'all can see it, and we know that all of our breeder fish had at least one copy of the gold 
allele if we're looking at the body color. This is not looking at OB, this is just looking at the body color. So we know from the results that at least some of the fish were heterozygous for non-gold. They had one copy of gold. So if, if you mate a male that is heterozygous to a female that's heterozygous, you get this result. You get three quarters golds and two thirds of those fish are heterozygous and you get one quarter grays. Okay, now let's take a look at what happens. If your male happens to be homozygous for gold, then, and the female is heterozygous, then you get this result. Everybody is gold and half of them are carrying the recessive for gray. Okay, so when you do this mating, you know that this fish, uh, that one of these two fish, you don't know whether it's the male or the female, is heterozygous. And you know that from the ratio that the other one is homozygous. Now, if we look at OB, and we'll use an N, capital N for non-OB, if you have two heterozygous fish, both of them are going to be non-OB because OB is a recessive, and you would end up with this result. You'd end up with three quarter non-OBs and one quarter OBs. And of the non-OBs, two thirds of them would be heterozygous for for OB. Now, if one of your fish is homozygous, then you end up with, oops, OB and OB. You end up with all non-OBs, but half of them are carrying the recessive OB. Things get complicated when you are dealing with the two genes that are on different chromosomes. If they were on the same chromosome, they would be inherited together, and they're obviously segregated differently. Okay, we're doing redoing the end of the video that I was working on because I discovered I could not really do something that complex dealing with two genes at one time on the fly. If somebody we all know the person behind the camera would give me a big whiteboard on the wall, then I could do all this stuff ahead of time and we wouldn't have to do this. Okay, so what we're looking at is we're trying to replicate what happened. And let me remind you, we ended up in the last batch of offspring with 70% golds, 9% gold OBs, 18% grays, and 3% gray OBs. Let's see, is that correct? Let me check. Yes, it is. Okay. If we assume that all of our breeders who are all gold, non OBs, were heterozygous for both gold and for OB, so they were gold, non OBs, but they're carrying OB and they're carrying gray. That means that the males would produce. Typically, males are on the top for some reason. The males would produce these gametes. One quarter of them would be gold, non-OB, one quarter gold OB, one quarter gray, non-OB, and one quarter gray OB. The females would produce similar eggs. Okay, when you fill in the grid, there are 16 cells. When you look at genetically, uh, this fish is going to be uh, gold non OB homozygous for both, but it's going to look, uh, it's phenotype, but what it looks like is gold. So if you count up all the golds, you end up with nine of these squares uh, being gold, three being gold OB, three being gray, and one being this lonely one down in the corner being gray OB. And if you look at the percentages, this is what you would expect. This is what we got. 
So what you can tell is that some of our gold breeders were homozygous. More than 50% of the genes of the alleles were gold rather than gray, but fewer than expected, about the right number of grays, but OB seems to be rarer. For example, we got 9% gold OBs and we expected almost 19% if everybody was like this. So gold is more common in our breeder population and OB is less common. We ended up with 3% gray OBs when we expected six and a quarter. We ended up with nine gold OBs when we expected 18.75, almost 19 of them. So we have a situation where we have more gold genes in the population, but fewer OB genes in the population. Next generation, we should end up with an even higher discrepancy. We should end up with more golds and fewer OBs. And we'll see what happens. And we'll do a similar chart this time with these percentages and see what happens next time, see if I'm correct. Could be that, that by chance I selected all fish that were any different than the breeders. Keep in mind, I replaced all our male breeders. So there's a chance that we ended up with, I think we used three males. It could be that all three of them are homozygous for gold, in which case everybody will be gold. So we'll find out. The females, we replaced about half of them. And you know, by chance, we should be getting more and more golds and fewer OBs each generation. Okay, good genetics.